Okay, so it is the end of the season, as you can see. Um, our trees are all turning colors here. Um, we're at the, you know, tail end of the foliage season. So the season, the growing season's over. We've had a couple frosts. Things are pretty much done in the garden, except for, of course, you know, kales and things like, uh, you know, your other brassicas, they're gonna make it through for a little bit longer because they can make it through a freeze or a couple frosts, but outside of them, pretty much everything's done. What I did want to give an update on was the straw bales. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the spring, when we started this uh, series on the straw bale gardening, this is the first time for us ever doing this. We had never uh, grown in straw bales before. And really the goal was is just kind of get some garden space in the yard here outside of the two raised beds that we have. Um, as you can see, we did stuff like planting in pots for beans um, but we had some straw bales so we figured let's give it a try so we did four of them um, as you can see uh, turning them different directions definitely had an impact on how they performed or how they stood up um, these ones here were turned sideways because basically the way it works is you want to have the open end of the straw so if you look at a piece of straw there's like a circle there if you can see that um, you want that facing up so that water can seep into it. And in these two bales, they were they were turned kind of sideways, so this way. So the string went around them like this, and the straw was laid out this way, so they went on their side. These two were packed differently, um, and they were more, you know, the wide way. And the straw facing up, you know, was that side. So it's kind of hard to describe, but basically if you think about these ones here, if you flip them over and turn the direction of the straw the opposite direction, that's how these were. So they were opposites. Um, the ones that were planted on the long side going up and down, um, those ones definitely held up more. Um, we put four tomatoes into here. The tomatoes did really, really well. I'm very surprised at how well the tomatoes did. I apologize for the chickens making so much noise over there um, doing their egg song. But um, yeah, so these ones did great. I, I'm actually very, very surprised at how well tomatoes did in here. The only problem that we had really um, with these was that they are magnets for slugs. So just absolute slug magnets. The slugs get in here and they're impossible to find. Um, and we do have a lot of slugs here. It's rainy a lot in Vermont in the summertime and it's cool. So it's perfect environment for slugs and the slugs really did take off in here. Outside of that though, if you can maintain the slugs for tomatoes specifically, these did a really, really good job. We had tomatoes in here, four plants. And then we had one, two, three, four, five potted tomatoes over there. And the, the tomatoes in here grew bigger than the potted ones. And the potted ones, I was giving fertilizer regularly. We didn't give these guys much fertilizer after the spring. With that said, you do load it up with nitrogen in the beginning of the year. So I'm assuming that that probably helped. Um, the other thing we grew in here is peppers. Peppers did horrible in here. I think it's that the peppers just need a warmer um, environment for their roots to, to go. They just did terrible. They did not handle any of the slug pressure, whereas the tomatoes did. Um, the peppers just, I wouldn't try gardening uh, like this again with peppers unless you were sure that you were gonna have a warm location. The last thing that we had in here was some cucumbers and some summer squash. So, you know, yellow crook neck squash and just some regular cucumbers. Those surprisingly did really, really well as well. Um, the yellow crook's neck squash, we had two plants on the end here and we had two plant cucumber plants here. The crook neck squash gave us so much squash that we could not eat it all. Like it was impossible for us to eat it all, just the two of us. Boy, those chickens are really, really going right now. Somebody just laid an egg. Um, but yeah, so I would say that if you want to grow squash in here, cucumbers in here or tomatoes in here, these are really, really good. Um, what we were hoping to do and what we still want to do is take these bales. Um, as you can see, they are seriously decomposed, right? They're breaking down significantly. We're going to put these on our trailer and take them over to our other property where our garden is. And we're just going to use these to amend the soil. You know, we, we had planned on doing that anyway. It's similar to the roof stout method that we're doing, right? You just keep adding organic material. And after a few years, you'll end up with a good amount of you know, usable, good, healthy soil. So that's the goal here. We weren't planning on doing anything else with these in the long run. 
But um, yeah, I would I would say that if you have the opportunity and the space to put a couple of these these uh, straw bales down, specifically if you're going to do things that don't really care so much about having warm, 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 warm soil like those peppers. Um, the tomatoes did great. The squash did great. The cucumbers did great. I would think other plants like those would probably do well. So if you wanted to grow like winter squash in here, maybe they would do okay. Um, I would also think that kale and any of your brassicas, you know, collards, that kind of stuff, would probably do well in here as well because they do just fine in cooler temperatures. You can see like we've got cooler temperatures right now and these guys are still looking great. Um, we did have some bug pressure in here because it was the end of the season and I didn't think we'd get any more cabbage worms, but we did. But um, even that, I mean, these guys are still looking really good. Um, I probably wouldn't eat some of these bottom ones, but the chickens are happy to have them. The curly leaf kale is still looking great. Um, we have some beets in here. So uh, we've been letting these go most of the summer and just picking them as we need, want them, you know, and there's a few in here. Um, the chickens do like the greens from all of these. So we've been, you know, using them to feed the chickens as well. So yeah, I would say that if you have the opportunity and want to use the straw bale gardening method, it's definitely worthwhile. It makes use of some space where you don't have to build a bed if you want it temporary. Cause like, you know, we'll pull this out next year. We can just throw a little bit of grass seed down and it'll be like, it never was here. Um, and the, whereas your regular garden beds, you can't do that, right? They're here, they're in, this, in place and you have to disassemble them. There's no disassembly required. So yeah, just figured I would give an update on that. I hope that you uh, enjoyed the update. I'll put a link in the description or if I can figure it out, I'll put it in the screen here um, where link back to our original planting of these. You can take a look through the year. I gave updates pretty much monthly through the summer. So uh, feel free to look back. Um, once again, link in the description, or if I can figure it out, I'll have just put it up there in the corner of the screen. But um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, click the bell, and you'll get notifications when we put up, uh, not you know, put up new videos. We try and tend to do them once a week, and we hope to keep doing that through the summer or through the winter. All right, have a good one. Bye.